In this example, I'd like to use the method of virtual work to determine a truss bar force. So I have a simple truss here made out of equilateral triangles, so the length of every bar is, is L. And I'd like to determine what the truss bar force is in this upper bar over here. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the method of virtual work and assume a very particular type of virtual motion. And the virtual motion that I'm going to pick is one in which the upper bar stays fixed in position. So let me just draw that there. And I'm going to kind of move it vertically out of the way just so that we can see what's going on. So there's this force in the upper bar here, which we'll just call R. And then when I, the truss itself, the rest of the remainder of the truss, I'm going to assume pivots rigidly about the left and the right supports. So, so if I draw that equilateral triangle there, it's going to move rigidly with a small rotation del theta, and the right side is going to rotate also with the same rotation del theta, and that way this node there remains together. And so there's a reaction force here and here, and these both have reaction force R. So in this virtual motion, I'm going to have a virtual motion in this direction here and one right here. And each one of these will have a magnitude del theta times L, so that's the length of the bar. And each one of these is orthogonal to that truss bar there. So I'm going to end up with uh, the virtual work associated with the original load that I had here. That's my external virtual work. And then I have the internal virtual work due to this truss bar. So this part of the truss bar here, the top core, doesn't move at all in this system. So to write down the external virtual work, I have P times del theta. And then the motion in the direction of P is L cosine of 30 degrees. So that's just uh, root 3 over 2. And then I also have the virtual work associated with this force here acting on both sides. Okay, So I'll have, from one side I'm going to have R del theta L, which is the magnitude, and then the cosine of the angles between the two vectors. So I'll have the cosine of 100 and 50 degrees, so that's this angle here. And then I'll have plus R del theta L cosine again of 150 degrees. So, and those two are going to add up together, so the cosine of 150 degrees is minus root 3 over 2. So, clearing the del thetas from both sides and the L's, they all cancel out. I found out that R is equal to P over 2. So the, the force in the upper chord of this little structure here is half of the lateral force that I apply to it.